Welcome to Ethiopia Insight. We are your go-to channel for the latest and most pertinent news from around the world, with a special focus on Ethiopia and Ethiopians. Today we'll be diving into some significant issues, shedding light on the recent unfruitful visit of the International Monetary Fund to Ethiopia. The IMF's latest visit to Ethiopia was filled with high expectations, but it ended without the anticipated breakthrough. The economic powerhouse's mission to Ethiopia hoped to set a new direction for Ethiopia's economic landscape, but instead, it exposed the deep-seated challenges that the country is grappling with. We'll also be exploring the controversy surrounding the British Museum and alleged looted Ethiopian tablets, the contentious acquittal in the Solomon Tekka case, and more. As we bid farewell to Piazza, We'll also delve into the FCFTA's greatest nightmare and discuss transitional justice in Ethiopia. So, sit back, relax, and let's get started with our in-depth analysis of these compelling stories. Remember, knowledge is power, and staying informed is the first step to understanding our interconnected world. Let's dive right into our first headline, the IMF's unfruitful visit to Ethiopia. Following the unsuccessful visit of the International Monetary Fund, Ethiopia is now faced with a myriad of economic challenges. The IMF representatives made considerable progress towards understanding how they could support Ethiopia's economic program, but negotiations are set to continue later this month in Washington. The lack of a solid deal leaves Ethiopia in a precarious situation, lacking the commitment it earlier pledged to its recognized international creditors. This state of affairs has sparked uncertainty and concern especially since the Paris Club, a group of developed creditor nations, issued a warning last year. They stated that an agreement to postpone Ethiopia's debt payments until 2025 could be invalidated if the country failed to secure an IMF loan by March 31st. However, clarity regarding the enforcement of that deadline by Paris Club members remains uncertain. As it stands, Ethiopia's economy is grappling with high inflation, a hard currency shortage, and escalating external debt repayments. This situation begs the question, what next for Ethiopia? In a surprising turn of events, the British Museum is under investigation for its possession of the Tabits, sacred Ethiopian tablets, for over 150 years. This issue came into limelight after Returning Heritage, a non-profit organization devoted to cultural restitution, lodged a formal complaint. Backed by the legal powerhouse Lee Day, they argue that these tabits were unlawfully obtained by British troops during the Battle of Magdala in 1868. The tabits are no ordinary artifacts. They symbolize the Ten Commandments and the Ark of the Covenant. According to the Ethiopian Orthodox Church's traditions, only priests are permitted to view these sacred tablets. For over a century, they have been kept hidden from public view. The contention lies in that the organization believes the Tabits can be rightfully returned to Ethiopia without violating the British Museum Act of 1963. The museum, however, firmly asserts that the law prohibits them from relinquishing the objects. This contentious issue has ignited a global debate about the rightful ownership and ethical treatment of cultural artifacts and could significantly impact Ethiopia's cultural heritage. In today's news, we see the headlines dominated by the shocking acquittal of a police officer involved in the fatal shooting of Solomon Tekka, a young Ethiopian Israeli. The courts ruled that the officer was in a life-threatening situation, justifying his warning shot, which tragically ended Tekka's life. This verdict has ignited a series of riots among the Ethiopian Israeli community, voicing their outrage and dissatisfaction. The victim's family has publicly decried the ruling, insisting that justice was not served. The Department for Internal Police Investigations, responsible for the initial indictment against the officer, is considering an appeal against the ruling. This controversial acquittal has sparked a national debate, bringing to the forefront intense discussions about police violence and systemic discrimination against the Ethiopian Israeli community. The ripple effect of this incident on the community and its impact on the broader socio-political landscape will be worth watching. Switching gears to Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, where the historic district of Piazza faces the threat of extinction. Known as a vibrant cultural hub, Piazza's charm lies in its unique blend of Italian-inspired architecture, bustling markets, and rich history. However, the city's relentless march towards modernization has put Piazza under the bulldozer, making way for new road corridors. For the locals and Ethiopian diaspora, Piazza holds a deep emotional significance. It's not just a district, but a symbol of shared history, communal memories, and an embodiment of Ethiopian resilience. 
This urban development plan, while promising infrastructural growth, is also eroding the city's identity. The quaint streets, the aroma of traditional Ethiopian coffee wafting through the air, the rhythmic Amharic music, all these elements that make Piazza, Piazza, are slowly fading into oblivion. The unfolding scenario in Piazza is a stark reflection of a larger global conflict, the tug of war between modernization and preservation of culture. As skyscrapers overshadow heritage buildings and highways cut through historic districts, one can't help but wonder, are we losing more than we are gaining? As we say goodbye Piazza, we are compelled to ponder on the delicate balance between progress and preservation and the price we pay for the relentless pursuit of development. Turning our attention eastwards, China has held the title of Africa's largest trade partner for 14 consecutive years. With trade experiencing a modest growth of 1.5% from 2022 to US dollar 282.1 billion in 2023. The Belt and Road Initiative, BRI, China's ambitious brainchild, aims to improve connectivity and cooperation on a transcontinental scale. With 49 African nations and the African Union AU, signing up for the BRI, the impact on China-Africa trade has been transformative. China is not just Africa's biggest bilateral trading partner but also its largest lender and one of the most significant foreign investors in the continent. However, this relationship is not without its fair share of controversies. China's mega-infrastructure investment in Africa has raised serious concerns about debt sustainability, putting several governments in a difficult position. This brings us to the African Continental Free Trade Area AFCFTA, which is now faced with the challenging task of navigating this intricate relationship. The challenge for Africa through the AFCFTA is to determine China's role, focusing on industrialization and technology. As China continues to expand its influence in Africa, the continent must navigate this complex relationship to ensure its own economic growth and sustainability. Will the AFCFTA manage to turn this potential nightmare into a dream come true? Only time will provide the answer. I could the establishment of a national Sharia board in Ethiopia revolutionize the face of Islamic finance in the country? This is the question on the minds of many as we delve into the latest updates in the world of Islamic finance. In a bid to foster a more inclusive financial system, the National Bank of Ethiopia has initiated a study to establish a national Sharia-compliant board. This move could potentially open new doors for the growth of Islamic finance in Ethiopia. As Ethiopia stands on the precipice of significant change, the country's justice ministry recently held a series of workshops aimed at validating a revolutionary draft policy on transitional justice. This policy, if successfully implemented, could potentially catapult Ethiopia into a new era, where fair, victim-centered trials become the norm and injustice is a thing of the past. The draft policy proposes an innovative dual approach to prosecute international crimes, harmonizing both national and international efforts. This method could potentially strengthen Ethiopia's criminal justice system, which has faced criticism for its arrest first, investigate later practice, and the lack of comprehensive rules of evidence. Indeed, the road to reform is not without its obstacles. Ethiopia's criminal justice system must strive to overcome its current inadequacies. There is an urgent requirement for a distinct rule of procedure and evidence to uphold fair trial standards and ensure victims' participation in the transitional justice framework. As Ethiopia embarks on this journey towards transitional justice, a myriad of questions looms large. Can the country surmount its challenges and successfully implement a system that ensures justice for all? Will this novel approach to justice help heal the nation's historical wounds? Only time will tell. That's all for now. Thank you for joining us. Before we sign off, we want to hear from you. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more insightful news updates like this video if you found it informative and share your thoughts in the comments below. Your engagement and feedback are invaluable to us. Until next time, Stay informed, stay safe, and have a great day. Thank you for watching.